uh, I have prepared this talk regarding distributing systems and uh, I am planning to talk more about them, uh, the issues that we have uh, implementing uh, such kind of systems and uh, how, how console uh, can help us. So let me start with some basic introduction about distributing systems. Basically, uh, who has worked with distributing system from you? Not more? Okay, I think, I, I think that each of us at least uh, was working uh, or was developing some distributing system because, for instance, even if you are using just the database, you are using a distributing system because in one place you have your application and uh, also the database is on another machine basically most of the time. So basically you are using some distributing or developing some distributing systems. Uh, it is well known that uh, programming distributing system is uh, pretty hard and uh, there are multiple challenges uh, which we need to face on uh, with this uh, when we are working on, we are developing distributing system. Basically, if uh, the very classical book, uh, pattern-oriented uh, software architecture defines four basic issues uh, when developing distributed system. The first one is service access and configuration. Basically, if you are developing some scalable distributed system, you need to identify uh, that kind of, this kind of service, service A, let's say, is on which, on which nodes is present. What if you add new version or new ad additional node uh, providing this service, how on other clients can identify uh, that there are new service there. Uh, also configuration, basically when you are using a uh, distributed system, the configuration uh, needs to be shared among these services most of the time. And how, how can you share this configuration? How can be accessed? Uh, even handling, uh, a lot of time when you are working with distributed systems, uh, yeah, some events occurs, for instance, you, and you need also to react to these uh, events when something uh, happen, and this is also very hard to distribute or to propagate the event to all nodes in the system so that uh, they, the system can react to it. Concurrency and synchronization is very basic and very well-known problem, problematic part. It's uh, problematic also in uh, Classical, uh, classical uh, information, or classical programs, when you are using multi-threads, multiple threads, you have problems with lockings uh, and locks, etc. And we know deadlocks, we know live locks, so it's hard even in one single node uh, classical system. If it's distributed over the network, you have run to the issues, even bigger issues. <coughs> also, we have another well-known problems. For instance, single point of failure, it's basically you want to avoid most of the time in production because you don't want to kill all your production only by killing one single point, one single node. It's very uh, difficult. It's very dangerous to to have something in your in your system. But on the other hand, it's very problematic uh, to avoid this situation. Uh, another problem is uh, mainly from uh, uh, high, available, high available clusters is split brain problems. If you have two nodes and uh, on two nodes you have one service, but this service needs to run only on one node and the another one is a passive node which needs to be started on the unavailability of the second node. And the nodes are basically split uh, by network problem. You can go, uh, go into the, some issues because you can very easily end up with two parallel services running. So this is also a very difficult problem to solve. And also CAP theorem, who knows CAP theorem? What is it? Basically, CAP theorem uh, is regarding uh, distributed data storages and the main uh, theory about CAP theorem is that you cannot have everything in your cluster. You need to do, uh, you need to how to say, uh, basically CAP theorem means that you ha uh, the si distributed systems or distributed storage can, uh, can uh, uh, be uh, available, it uh, can be consistent, it can be uh, network partition uh, aware of network partitions, but not all at once. You need to pick two uh, properties and the third one you cannot afford 
basically. This is cap theorem. So even if you are do, doing or we are, we are creating distributed systems, you need to know the trade-off you want to have on that system. And even if you are using basically some third-party uh, distributed system, distributed storage, you need to know uh, which, uh, what, uh, uh, what properties it have because otherwise you can run very easily to surprises in production. Uh, we, we have talked uh, today a lot of about salary, so I will add something. Uh, and I will add and I will show you how difficult are distributed systems. You can see uh, that in salary, there is one component, it's a salary bit, it was mentioned today uh, previously. And this component is basically scheduling tasks uh, which are uh, executed over this uh, cluster, uh, over the workers. But the problem is there is no issue, there is no bug. Uh, which is uh, adding single point of failure uh, in a console, uh, in a salary cluster. And it is when uh, your salary bit service is down, basically uh, all uh, scheduled uh, jobs are stopped. And this is issue and it's very difficult to implement it in a way that you can avoid it. Another uh, point or another story is airflow. Airflow is a, a platform where you can program and uh, develop uh, workflows as uh, acyclic uh, directed graph, graphs, DAX. And uh, basically, again, here you have a central component scheduler which uh, defines which tasks are uh, executed on workers and uh, in which order they, will, they are executed. Again, uh, I will show you here. It's a architecture of the airflow. You can see that scheduler is the only node, only point, which uh, has, uh, it must be a singular. You cannot have multiple schedulers running at once because otherwise you are in trouble. Uh, so you can see also all other components are replicated. So you have multiple workers. So if one worker is down, you have no problem. If you, uh, one web node, he is down, you are not in problem, but if scheduler is down, everything stops. And this, this is not very good situation. So now I will show you how to solve these issues. We can use uh, console and how easy it is. Okay, so what is console? At first, console is clustered and highly available solution. It means that uh, Implementing or de uh, deploying console, you are not adding single point of failure. This is one biggest uh, property of the system. Uh, console uh, at first enables us uh, to register services and uh, discover services. It means that the clients of the services doesn't need to know where the service is located. Basically, it needs to know the location of console. And since console is highly available, so uh, you don't need to be afraid that console is not present there. Uh, console also uh, provides key value storage, which uh, enables us to uh, centrally store configuration of the whole system. And uh, this uh, configuration is available all the time. Also, console has um, multiple uh, advanced features, uh, uh, distribution into multiple data centers. And uh, also, uh, it enables us uh, to create the logs, uh, which uh, uh, enables us to add uh, some synchronization points in our distributed system. So let me start uh, with uh, creating a, a cluster of console, because this is most important and most uh, uh, most important uh, point of the uh, console. Basically, console needs to have at least three nodes. Uh, otherwise, uh, you cannot have uh, support of uh, failure tolerance. Uh, if you want to have more than one uh, node failure tolerance, you can add multiple nodes. So if you have five nodes, you can afford two nodes down. If you have uh, seven nodes, you can afford three nodes down. Uh, how we can build this cluster is not so uh, straightforward that you just run it and that's it. Uh, but it's very easy uh, on other way uh, because you need to follow only two steps. The first step is uh, bootstrapping uh, each node 
with the number of expected initial nodes. Basically, you are adding uh, the f uh, parameter bootstrap expect and the number of nodes which are, will be present in the cluster initially. When you have this, for instance, three nodes isolated, you just need to uh, one node run the join command and basically the all nodes joins together and create the cluster and you have cluster up and running. When you have this cl initial cluster, you can add on the fly new nodes without any problem. And also if some node will go down, you have no problem until you reach the critical mass of nodes. Uh, also nice feature of console is uh, development mode when you can install console on your local laptop and uh, just run in single instance. Basically you have no, of course, you don't have any uh, failure support but uh, it's for development. So you don't need to have running somewhere in the server side, you don't need to have free uh, virtual machines, you need just one instance of console with special parameter uh, which is putting it uh, to dev mode and you can start developing. No problem with that. Okay, so let's start with uh, the most basic and most important stuff. It's uh, service discovery. As I mentioned, uh, service, uh, console is decoupling the services and the clients of the services. Uh, it's decoupling in a way that service itself at first is registering it to console. It can use HTTP as, uh, as it's mentioned in the presentation, but you can also register it by uh, configuration in console. Then the Basically, the service is registered inside the console. Basically, it's available to the world. So client, when wants to use a service, at first he discovers the service using HTTP or DNS interface of console. And after he gets the real node, or he the address of the node of the service, you can call the service without any issue. So client doesn't need to know where the service is located. He doesn't only need to know where is console located. <coughs> Here is an um, example of uh, service registration. Uh, basically, uh, we have some JSON where you specify or the name the service, so you provide the service name. You can provide the text which can be useful for uh, some uh, searching, for some advanced searching of the service, and you basically provide the address of the service and part of the service. After that point, uh, the client you can see it here, uh, I'm using curl to, for sending uh, and registering service in the console. Uh, after that, basically service can, uh, after that point, can service uh, be discovered by a client. Here's the uh, example of DNS interface. Uh, so basically, again, I'm using command line tool, but basically you can, uh, you can do more robust things. Uh, you can uh, do a bind service, uh, configure bind service, and to redirect uh, the a DNS uh, request to the console, and after that, uh, the console is fully transparent to the client. Uh, in this point, uh, I am uh, querying directly console on uh, port 86600, uh, and uh, you can see their uh, answer is basically the service, is uh, uh, where the service is located. Uh, you can see that in the first uh, example, you cannot uh, find the port. Uh, to find the port and more deep information about the service, you need to use a service uh, a query of the request, uh, sorry, of, of the DNS, it's uh, the last line in the slide. Okay, so, uh, but we have a problem. The problem is what if the service is down? Because we are creating a, a distributed systems and distributed system can have multiple nodes and more, uh, uh, more nodes you add, uh, the bigger prob probability that some node will be down, failed, under maintenance, whatever. Uh, this also can be handled by console, and it's by health check. Basically, by health check, uh, you can provide, during, or during the registration, the service can provide the mean how console can check the health uh, of the service, whether the service is available using some means of, I don't know, for instance, it can use HTTP, or it can use raw TCP IP, it can use our, uh, custom script, it can use uh, Docker container a check. Uh, there are multiple ways. Uh, so at first, service will register itself and also register the way how to console should check it. And everything else basically is uh, the same. Uh, the client needs only to query the, or needs to say uh, to console that he wants only healthy 
services, not the services which are failing. And that's it. Uh, here, is, uh, here is the example. It's the same example as previous, uh, just the highlighted one is added. Highlighted lines are added, basically uh, we are adding a check. Uh, we are using HTTP uh, check, basically you can see the URL uh, which needs to be queried by console and also uh, an interval that each second this uh, check should be uh, uh, executed. And also you have the register uh, service. Uh, this means that uh, after 30 minutes of uh, service unavailability, this service is automatically deregistered from console, so it's not present there. Uh, service discovery is pretty the same. Uh, now, just for verbosity, I'm using HTTP interface. You can see that I am querying the console, some console node, and I am adding the parameter passing through, which means that, okay, give me just healthy nodes. I'm not interested in, no, uh, in services which are not alive, because why, why do we need? And here is the response. Basically, it's slightly different. Uh, this is the response of uh, console, and you can see that uh, we are getting uh, service on service A example.com on port 8000. It provides multiple information and addition of also the checks. It's providing the node availability, etc. Also the data center where uh, the service is presented. Uh, so, but the core is uh, service part. Okay. So now we know how to find the service. Let's continue with configuration. As I said, when you are developing distributed systems, it's very useful to have some configuration in central place. You can use database, you can use other means, but uh, I think this is, console is better place because everything you have in one place. Uh, so, and also in console is, uh, console is very easy to use for configuration and uh, using uh, key value storage. Key value storage is basically key value storage uh, in form key and value, of course. And the value can be any, any JSON, basically. So console is doing for you uh, the encoding, etc. It's using uh, Base64. Uh, you, uh, uh, you can query the key value storage, and you can use key value storage in uh, two ways. Command line interface or HTTP API. HTTP API is very, very easy to use. It's uh, restful, so it's very, very easy and very fast to uh, learn. Uh, moreover, console provides additional features uh, to key value, key value storage. Uh, it's transactions at first. Transactions means that uh, you can execute multiple operations at once, basically automatical, automatically. And also uh, check and set operations you can use, uh, which are automatic and uh, auto, aut atomic. And uh, this is building block for uh, a manual of locking, basically. Uh, but they are very easy to use. Uh, uh, prepared uh, locks, so you don't need to go much in deep. But if you want, you can develop by yourself based on key value storage your own uh, synchronization points. And also, uh, the good news is that uh, this key value storage is, of course, distributed over the nodes of console, so you don't need to uh, care on the, to which node you are querying, and uh, also highly available. So it's very, very fun to use. Here is an example how we can use key value storage from console. Basically, the first one is setting a value. You can see that I'm using a put HTTP request. I'm just putting hello world uh, to key hello. Uh, the second one is also it's uh, fetching the data. You can see the value. It's uh, not a raw text, but uh, when you decode it using B64, you are getting the same what you put to this key value storage. Uh, and the last one is deleting. It's basically using delete method of HTTP and you will remove it. Very easy, very, very fun to use. Okay, <coughs> so distributed locks. As I said, uh, distributed locks are, uh, you can, for developing distributed locks, you can use, uh, you can use uh, key value storage and also this, presented here are based on a key value storage of console, but uh, you don't need to do it manually. Basically, console is doing uh, a lot of stuff for you. You don't need to care about that. Uh, you can use, you can create bus these distributed logs uh, mutex, very old-fashioned mutex, or you can use even old 
dirt fashioned uh, semaphore if you want. Uh, and basically what you need is on client side to install console, the binary console, and when you want to have some service run only one instance over the whole cluster or wall, whatever, uh, you need just to provide or execute this command using command lock, uh, and that's it. Uh, this co console lock command will execute your command for you, and uh, it will take care that only one command will be executed over wall uh, in infrastructure over wall that's the center. So you don't need to be afraid that somewhere else will be uh, executed. Uh, and also it guarantees that if your currently running instance is down, uh, another will start up on the other node. So it means you have some very easy to use, very simple to, de simple to de deploy, uh, highly available cluster. For instance, you, if you know uh, Red Hat extension, highly available extension of Red Hat is basically the same, but it's not so complex, not so uh, difficult, and also very task server from Symantec is pretty the same, but they are much more difficult to uh, implement and you need also special hardware, et cetera. This is for free, basically. Here is an example how you can integrate it in systemd. So you can see it's very easy. Basically, you need to just uh, add one line, exit start. You need to add a path to the console and your command, that's it. And now I will come back to the previous uh, slides in the beginning and I will solve the issues that we have with current uh, current uh, programs or uh, libraries that we have. So at first, Celerybit, very easy to use and very easy to solve the problem of a single point of failure. Basically, what you need to do is two steps. At first, you need to implement your own custom scheduler, uh, which is which have some central storage because the the current that is in upstream saves all state in one single file on localhost. So you cannot use it, of course, when you want to have it uh, highly available. So at least you need to use a database scheduler from uh, Django Celerybit, or you need to implement your own, for instance, in Redis. It's not very uh, difficult to do. I did it in one hour, basically. I, I had uh, my own scheduler, scheduler. And the second uh, point you need to do, the second step, is that you need to execute, on, at least on two nodes, uh, this scheduler using console lock, basically. And it will ensure that only one instance will be running at one point. You don't need to be afraid that there will be two, uh, two uh, cellular bits running at once, so you have a consistency uh, applied. Uh, pretty the same holds for uh, uh, Airflow, mentioned also in the beginning. Uh, basically, there it's even simpler situation because you not, don't need to do the first step. You just need to execute uh, the scheduler using uh, console lock, and you have you are done. You have high level uh, airflow. Okay, so the last side, basically, what we can, Anna, what else can be done using uh, console. Console implements also access control list, so you can control also who is accessing console and what is executing on console. So this is a pretty good feature if you want to scale. Uh, as I mentioned, it has a multi data center support, commercial support. Uh, also, it has watches and events. If you remember, I in the beginning I said that one of the problems is uh, distributing or uh, how how we can react to events. Some event is fired what we can do, how we can distribute this even to another uh, nodes. Basically, this is the answer. Uh, console, can, you can add watches and uh, you can fire events and the watches can be attached to some events. So it means that the system can react to some events which, uh, which happened there. And it's up to you how we define these events. Of course. of course, and also the reaction to these events. And these events are propagating not only on one single node, of course, but in all cluster. So all watches attached to this event are fired and react to this event. It does also web UI. It means that uh, you can visualize, uh, visualize things and you can very easily to find out what's happening, what's the state of the cluster and what are services available. And also there are very, this is pretty good feature. There are a lot of libraries for multiple languages which you can use and you don't need to use our uh, HTTP interface. 
Uh, for instance, Python has also library for that. It's using requests, and also it says uh, asynchronous version of it, so you can use also async IO. So basically, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> and have you any questions? Thanks very much. Yeah. First question, can you compare console to etcd? Yeah. ATCD is, I'm, I'm not, I haven't used ATCD, but what I read and what I know, ATCD is basically for configuration mainly. So you don't have all other features as uh, services, service di uh, discoveries, etc. ATCD is basically a distributed key value storage. Next question, how about load balancing? Can you choose strategy for load balancing, for example, round robin between services? It depends on your console will return all services and depends on your logic of application. It, it cannot, I think it cannot load balance. You can use stacks. For instance, you can have primary secondary services, but uh, I think there is no logic in console that can load balance for you. Regarding console key value storage, uh, why is there any need for it? Um, aren't there other high availability key value stores? Yes, uh, they are, for instance, Zookeeper or TCD. Uh, but basically here you have everything in place. You don't need to have multiple solutions. You have everything in one place. Basically also because if you want to take care of multiple uh, distributed systems, it's, it's uh, something that it costs you. You need to take care of it. Uh, you don't need to have two services. You can have just one. That's all the time we have for questions today. So thank you very much, Matush, for your talk.